power is advanced. And oh, could we just oh. press that tight against there? Basically, it's a plate, 12 inch extension. And the slider in. Like, it's so light. Okay. So is this hit strong enough? One of my biggest regrets is not upgrading my bike rack and sewer tote storage when we started full-time RV traveling over four years ago. I was using my 20-year-old Thule bike rack and my sewer tote was just strapped to it. It was such a pain. The bike was held on by the top tube only and that bikes that didn't have a top tube, like my mountain bike, I had to use a temporary top tube. Every time we set up and packed up, I struggled with this setup because I was too cheap to buy a new bike rack. The other reason I hadn't upgraded the rack is that I would have to find a different solution for storing the sewer tote. We always have our sewer tote with us as we rarely camp at sites with full hookups. The other problem with the old bike rack is that it was really low to the ground, especially on our low clearance Grand Design Solitude it would drag over bumps and ditches. There was no way I was gonna put that crappy old bike rack on my brand new reflection. I wanted a modern bike rack that cradles the tires, it's easy to load and very secure. I did a bunch of research and decided on a Kuat brand transfer to bike rack. It's strong enough to hold two heavy e-bikes and was approved for RV trailer usage under warranty for up to two bikes. Now the problem was where to put the sewer tote. There was no way to just strap it to the new bike rack. Now I could have used the RV ladder, but I would have to have it hooked so high that it wouldn't obscure the taillights. That would be very difficult to lift a 45 pound tote that high. Also a heavy sewer tote can destroy an RV ladder over time, ruining the steps and the attachments to the back of the RV. This video is all about how I modified the bike rack and the hitch setup to store my sewer tote safely and make it easy to get on and off of the RV. This is very different than my other RV DIY projects. As I showed the entire process I went through, making decisions, designing, building, and filming along the way. If you are looking for a bike rack and sewer tote storage solution for your RV, use the chapters below to skip to the sections that you're interested in, like using a hitch extension, adding a bike rack and making it rigid and secure, building the sewer tote rack on the extension, strengthening the rack and putting it all together. I'm thinking about putting this on the back of the rack to extend it to attach the Blue Boy to. And this is what it looks like right here. Oops, it's basically an extension. It looks like it's about 12 inch extension. And then it hooks up to the receiver. Then the bike rack would attach onto that. So let's see how that works. Okay, the idea is to put this in here. Okay, that extends like that. That goes in there like that. Then the blue boy would go there and then the bike rack would go in there. And this goes in here like that. That's actually pretty good. This actually might work. Now will the blue boy fit up there? That's the question. Okay, is there enough room? Something like that. Somehow another go like that. The front wheel goes into that one. And the back wheel goes into that one, right? Right? I do like how quickly that does kind of like lock in there pretty good. Should have plenty of room to put a little rack there. Something to hold up that. I think that'll work. I think what I want to do is put a bar coming up from here that keeps this from strapping against here. I think I've got my solution here. Here, measuring tape. I'm gonna need something that is, let's say at least, maybe 32 inches tall, 19 inches between the wheels. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mount this back here to this plate. I'm gonna have some kind of bars that come up that support it, to strap it to it. 
but they gotta be pretty strong. Okay, let's see what I can think up here. Okay, so now I got my two bars. The way these are gonna be mounted on the back of the frame like this, and uh, now we just gotta line the bars up and the mounting brackets. The problem with this kit is it comes with these, these brackets, which are great. These are gonna mount down on top of the platform. But then it comes with these, obviously, very long screws that are designed to go around a uh, RV bumper, a four inch bumper. But I obviously, I do not need uh, long bolts like this. And the other thing is that they're only partially threaded, so I can't even cut them and use them for my purposes because uh, the upper portion does not have a thread. So I'm gonna have to go get some replacement uh, bolts for this. It does come with uh, washers and lock nuts, so I don't need those, but I need a short version of this. So let's go and measure. One is gonna go here, one is gonna go here, and then we're gonna have one of these here, one of these here. I don't need these, these big huge, heavy steel plates. So one is gonna go like that, and it'll be screwed down like that. So that should be give me a good platform. But I don't need those super long screws. So, all I need is a very short bolt to go through that. I think I might have some bolts with me that are already that size, but I'll have to see. So I'm thinking something probably about 20 or 30 millimeters. Kit here, this is one of my screw kits I keep in the truck that's pretty heavy, but um, I'm looking for one more of those nuts. I got super lucky and I just happened to have the right size bolt in my kit here, which these are about, I'd say about an inch and a half long. And I just happened to have eight of them and they fit on the nut that, that was provided. So that's perfect. So that should be good. Now all I could do is figure out where I want to put the mounting holes. So I'm gonna line up the mounting holes and then drill the holes. Okay, not only do I have the right bolts, but they're actually stainless. Okay, to get this project done, I'm just gonna need a set of drill bits. I'm gonna need a decent drill. I'm gonna need two half inch sockets. And then I had to get some uh, extra bolts. These are 5 16 bolts that are an inch and a quarter long, which should be long enough. And then I'm gonna use the nuts and the washers that came in the kit, and, but using my new, my own bolts. So first thing I'm gonna have to do is kind of line up exactly where I want it. These little brackets right here will go right over top of here. I'm gonna line them up so that the holes are in the right place. And then I'm gonna drill the holes uh, place the bars in, put the brackets on, and then tighten it down. Of course, you also need the extension that I got from um, Harbor Freight Tools. This was about 30 bucks. It's a 12 inch extension that has got this little platform on it. It's actually designed as a step, but it's welded on very strong, and I think it'll be very secure <clears throat> for this application. It's a little heavy, but we'll see. Now, I think this application can work really with any bike rack. Any bike rack that is gonna attach out here, whether it's a platform type, uh, a type like I have, uh, like the Kuat, or a like a 1UP, or anything, it's giving you that extension, it's giving you an extra 12 inches of space out here to put the Blue Boy, and safely put it where it's not gonna mark up the RV or anything like that, so I think that could, this could this solution could work in a wide variety of circumstances. Now, extending the bike hitch will put extra stress on the receiver, but I'm way under. This is a 300 pound uh, receiver um, capacity, and uh, with the two bikes and the hitch, it's I mean and the and the everything together, I'm probably less than 200 pounds. So I think we should be good to go. Yeah, because I got 50 pounds per bike. The rack is 50 pounds. This setup right here is about 30 pounds. We got about five pounds in here. So all, all in all under 200 pounds. 
make a mark. I think I want them right in the middle of that area. I think that's probably the strongest. Maybe a quarter inch from the edge and then put them there. I want them as far apart as possible, but I don't want those tearing out or bending. So let's go get a Sharpie. I'm about half an inch from the edge and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark out the center of this area for each one of these. I keep these metallic silver Sharpies in my toolbox all the time. It should give me a good idea of where I wanna put those holes. So with, when the brackets come from the kit that I got from Amazon, obviously they come like this because they're meant to go over like a, a bumper, but you, know, you don't need the bottom part because we're gonna be bolting it right to this. So there's a little extra weight that you don't have to have. And I'm gonna line this up to be equivalent to what it was on the other side. I'm gonna use my Sharpie here. The silver shows up really good on the black. I like to do that technique with the mark, with the marker, because it basically shows me a little oval. My automatic center punch, the same distance, I think. Ugh. I like to drill hard and slow. Ouch, that hurts. Hard and slow. Lots of pressure. Okay. Okay. I'm using stainless hex bolts that are 5 16 and one and a half inches long. Pull out our washers and our nuts. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a nut. Oops, we're gonna put a washer, lock washer, and then nut. You do this one, washer, lock washer, and then nut. Get that started. So then we're going to take one underneath. Right block that. Having two half inch sockets is handy. One with a deep well, but all we have is a socket and a crescent wrench, so that'll be fine. You can see how the deep well socket helps on the nut side. Just adjust that so they're about the same height. I want to make sure that these are the same distance. So this is seven and an eighth. This one is seven and a half. So I'm going to move this one ever so slightly. I get seven and a half here. Seven and a half. Perfect. So they're both seven and a half uh, along here five inches and five inches perfect now we can tighten it down yeah if it didn't have if it didn't have a long socket in the bottom it would bottom out on that screw and make it a pain so it's good to have a long one on the bottom Snug them down, but don't over tighten or it'll bend the bracket. Those babies are on there. Okay, now here is the moment of truth. We'll see if how the uh, blue boy goes on there. I think I want to put it this way, like that. Okay, let's try that. Okay. Okay, let's back this up a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Huh. Looks pretty good. So let's try some uh, Harbor Freight straps here. The rack kit actually comes included with two straps that are actually pretty good. I'm just so used to using my Harbor Freight 
cheap straps, I keep about 20 of these around the RV. That's pretty good. Okay, let's do the bottom one. Okay, so I got it strapped on there. And it's not going anywhere. But what I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to make, because what happens, it has some lateral movement like this. They don't. And they don't like that. I want the wheels, I want the base to stay firm. And I want to give this something to rest on. Besides just right now it's resting. Right now it's resting on this part of the, right on that corner right there. And I don't want that. I want like a little piece of wood. I'll put a piece of wood between each side here. That will lift it up. What I'm going to do is put some kind of board. That will kind of go like this. That will sit up against this. I think that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to put some kind of some kind of board between the two wheels. Looks like the distance between the wheels. Where I want to do this is 19 inches. Just got a spare piece of two by six that I kept in the back of the truck for leveling. Nineteen. Okay, here we go. This jigsaw is the only power saw I keep with me. Okay, 19 inch. Let's see how that's gonna fit. So right now I got my piece of wood here. You can see the piece of wood. It's going out of there. Looks like it's supporting it good here. It's sitting on the back here instead of anywhere else looks like that should hold it up pretty good I'm gonna move it farther back that way I think actually and we're gonna take this down right that's kind of good practice get this thing off of here okay what I want is this piece of wood it's gonna sit something like that Right, I want that like that. This should be two inches from the back. I'm gonna temporarily tape this in place. I use this strong duct tape to temporarily hold it in place so that I can test bringing the blue boy on and off without it moving. Okay, I don't know, let's try this. <laughs> let's move the bike rack back. Because this should be like this when I'm working on it. The rack has two spots to put straps through to make sure they don't slip down. Oh, there we go. I think that's what we're talking about right there. Okay, good. That looks great. Oh, that's like perfect. Now it can't go back and forth because it's got that board there. I think I got that where I want it. Now I just have to screw that in place. What I think I'm going to do is attach this piece of wood to the metal down below with just a couple of screws. I'm going to put one screw on each side. I'm going to use these uh, self-tapping metal screws to go into this. Um, but I'm going to countersink it into here. The, uh, I'm going to center this. Using one of these uh, self-drilling screws do the same thing over here I'm going to put a little countersink here I'm going to look really good the other side self-drilling screw okay that baby's on there. What I did here, I got those screws countersunk in there. One on each side. So now that's not going anywhere. Okay, so let's peel the tape off. Let's peel this tape off. Make wood, this is evenly spaced here. And let's go ahead and mount that up now. Nice and easy space, I kinda 
go down there like that and then tip it over. The good thing is now, I mean, I can't get that thing off of there. I mean, the whole bike rack moves. Let's move the bike into position. Okay, that's where the inner bike would be. So even if it was moving, it's not gonna hit my handlebar. It's moving back and forth, and even if it's, let's see, it's moved over this way. Looks like it should stay clear of the handlebar easily. Where it's leaning, it's, it's, this is free, so this isn't hitting anything. The cap can still go on like normal. This cap can still go here and not have a problem. Put some rubber cushion or something along this edge. Hmm. I'm gonna stick if you put like a metal bar under here. Attach that. Hmm. Okay, I'm here at Lowe's in one of my favorite sections. I'm gonna get a 1 8 times 1 inch times 3 foot piece of steel that I'm gonna use underneath the uh, thing just to brace it. And I think I think this thickness is enough. One inch should be good enough. It's like eight bucks for a piece, but that's not too bad. These are my two choices right here. And I'm thinking, I think I'm just gonna do this one, use my vise and bend it the way I want. Okay, as a DIYer, this is definitely my favorite aisle at Lowe's where you can get all kinds of screws and hooks and metal and fasteners and little plastic goodies. You can pretty much get anything you need for a DIY project. Now, this is definitely where you come for inspiration when you're doing a, a DIY project. Quarter inch, where are the 5 sixteenths? Stainless nuts. There you go. Found my 5 sixteenths inch stainless steel. Down low is where I got my stuff that I need. I got 5 sixteenths uh, nylock nuts here. And you're helping me find some 5 sixteenths. Wow, baby. Um, That's right. Yeah, I don't I know I want 5 sixteenths uh, bolts. I just want a hex bolt. About two inch. About two inches. Mm, I was looking for inch and a half, actually. Oh, right here. This uh, next one. Over. Oh, there we go. Right on. Happens every time I come to Lowe's and spend time in this parts department. I end up picking up bags of screws and all little parts and pieces for projects because you never know where you're gonna be when you need the stuff. Okay, I'm almost done here at Lowe's, but this is the hard department to go through without buying something. I try not to walk through here because this is where it gets expensive. I close my eyes and just kind of walk through the toy department here. The whole channel based on just going to Lowe's. I'm just kidding. Great. You're awesome. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. No problem. Have a great one. You print. Always print. Always print the receipt. Came here for a couple of screws. I leave with fifty-six dollars in extra stuff. Time to go and put some of this stuff into action. It actually ended up being a beautiful day. It was supposed to be raining today. What happened? One thing that I wanted to do is strengthen this platform as I'm going to put a little piece of metal basically from one side to the other just to help uh, strengthen it side to side. It seems really strong. It seems to be welded really well from Harbor Freight when they put that step on there. But I'm just going to, as a safety, put this piece of steel. It basically go through here across to the other side. And then I'm going to find some way to maybe uh, screw it to this to kind of hold it in place. So let's see what that looks like. But I think I'm going to take this all off to do this right. Putting my new Kuat bike rack on and off is really fast and easy. Okay, good. This over there. Let's pull this all off. Okay, so here is the... The bottom of the frame the way it's attached it gives you a good another good idea so what I want to do is I'm going to attach this piece of metal from this side to this side I might even put two of them on there I'm going to cut it in half and then bend it from there so basically it's something like that I think I'm going to try and find a vise 
and bend it right perfect like, luckily where I'm staying they've got a vise here nice big strong vise so what I want to do is take this and make my bends right there I had to improvise in making the bends that I needed to make in this uh, piece of steel uh, so what I did is I used the vise and I had two crescent wrenches and I would uh, slide one of the crescent wrenches over the metal and then I would position the other crescent wrench, uh, you know, a long ways across it so that I would give uh, tension across it. And I just used these uh, crescent wrenches in combination to bend the shape exactly the way I wanted it. Okay, now I want the bend, I want this last bend just before there. And just before here, let's see. Oh, it's getting close. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Now that I've got a metal piece pretty much fixed how I want to do it. I'm going to pull the center bolts. To be able to get the uh, metal brace to fit, I had to uh, pull the middle bolts. And later on, I replaced these with shorter bolts. I basically just cut about half an inch off of them to uh, get it so the brace would fit over top of the uh, middle bolts. Yeah, we need a good sized drill bit here. Okay, let's see if that one lines up. It lines up nice. Okay. Okay. So now I've got the bolts going through there. Good. Put the bolt through there. We'll just take our washer and our lock washer and our handy dandy nut here. Put that down there. Lock washer. Put the good, the good one there. Okay, we're on this side. Okay, that feels pretty good. But, I just... That should be really strong. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's nice and tight. Okay, that's nice and tight. Now what I'd like to do is put a screw right through this to bend this down here. It's on there nice and solid now, baby. Okay, what I do need to do is cut. I need to cut. I need to cut these little ends off here now. Cut these off. One. The Dremel is the first tool I would recommend to any DIYer. Should I put a screw here is the question. Right through the middle of this. I think that Chris says,
you know how that looks. It goes all the way through there. Now that I've got my my cross brace built underneath it, I'm gonna put it back onto the RV and then get her all snugged up. One additional item that I picked up that I'm trying to make it so that the it has a really nice snug fit in here. So basically it's a bolt on the inside of this little flange here. And it goes in, it presses in like that. You just pop it in, slide it down, line it up in the holes. And it comes with its own pin right here that's going to screw in there. And then what it does is it'll snug it in and make it nice and tight, hopefully. So you can see on the inside there where the pin goes in, and it's going to snug and press that tight against there. We're going to put that in there. That lines up. And you see that little hole right there. Can you see that? You can see on the inside there is the little gold nut, nut screw in there. Looks like it's lined up pretty good. So that's going to go through like this. And there's a pin. Potter pin goes on the side. That's just for an emergency. But I'm just going to screw this in. What that's going to do is snug the receiver into the hitch. And so you'll see, let's see if you can see this right now. You can see right now, you can see if I loosen it, very loose. I mean, it's easy to move it around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snug this now. Just a couple of turns. Nice and tight. I mean, that thing's, that thing's not going anywhere. So it's nice and tight. I can just take my pin and put my pin on the other side just in case. So that's nice and snug. So one more thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to put an anti-rattle plate on here. And what this does is it goes on here like this. And you put a washer and a nut. And then you got another washer and another nut. You could basically it's a plate that's gonna go and put pressure from this on kind of basically force it uh, push this up and take the pressure. Okay, get that snug. <laughs> Make it nice and tight. Junior is a deep socket here. There's a lot of pressure in that. And that, what it's doing is pushing up on the hitch now. It's basically grabbing this and leveraging against this piece and now I mean that thing is like it's like in a continuous piece of this whole thing now so so I got two things in here that are gonna keep it keep this from wobbling because I really want to keep this as rock solid as possible so that we don't get any wobbling transferring to the bike rack two more dirt in there slides in there like that here we go. Got my hole lined up. So instead of using a the regular pin it came with, I'm using a locking pin. This is an extra security feature. You know? That locked onto there like that. But the hitch itself, the, the bike rack itself, has got a mechanism that tightens it up and snugs that. So the bike rack's got this little mechanism right here. When you turn this, it brings out a little cam. What you see is this little cam right here. And when, you, when you turn this little wrench in the back through this little cam, it makes that expand. And this thing begins to push out. So to come back in again, we bring it down. See, there's it down. Spinning down and then back out again. And what it does is expands out like that and it presses out against the inside of it and completely cuts out all that wobble. So, 
I could feel it snugging a little tighter. Okay. Oh yeah, now it's not moving at all. We're gonna take this and tighten it. Now this is also a kind of a security feature to keep you from stealing, but if they got one of these little wrenches, they could steal it. Which is why I have a locking, a locking pin in there instead. Okay. That seems nice and tight. How about from this end too, from behind me? Well, I'll go up here like this, okay. Okay, so is this hitch strong enough? I hope so. Otherwise, I'm going down. The thing I want to see is if it's strong side to side. I mean, it wobbles, but that's what it should do. I'm 180 pounds, so. Okay, so here's the blue boy coming in. This just goes up on there, so that piece of wood, the piece of wood keeps it from moving side to side. With this new setup, it should only take me two minutes to either take it off or put it back on the rack when we are travel. The nice thing about this bike, it's so light. So 20 pounds. Just got me a little more. Okay, that's good. Pop this up here. Whatever he looks like exposing your camera. It doesn't like that. And then this goes like that. You gotta make sure you got air in your tires. And that's good. I got a lot of clearance between the bike, handlebars, and the blue boy. And that looks good. I don't think that's going anywhere. Cover. The only cover is tang. Since I can tilt it now, I cover over. I've owned this cover for four years, but I've never really used it because it was such a pain to put on my old bike rack and sewer tote. And there it is. Pop it back in its place. I like it. It's like a much better solution than I used to have, honey. I Man, it's like perfect now. I guess we're done. One more project in the bag. 50 more to go before we can hit the road. Are you like us and bring your sewer tote with you? on all your RV adventures? How do you store your sewer tote? How do you store your bikes? Do you have a better solution? I wanna hear what you have to say down in the comment section below. You can also leave questions about my solution down in the comment section. You can also message us on Instagram and Facebook. If you are interested in sewer totes and how they can help you extend your stays at campgrounds without hookups, then check out this video right over here where I compare the top Barker and Camco sewer totes in a shootout. If you like these kinds of RV DIY videos and don't wanna miss the next one, subscribe and get notified when we release another video. And remember, downsizing does make sense.